The plane had no missiles or guns on board, yet it became one of the most dangerous instruments of the Cold War. It remained invisible to Soviet radar for years. No missile could catch it. It was called the Black Arrow and was considered a technological marvel that could not be surpassed. It seemed like there would be no more platforms like this one, but today something new is appearing on the horizon, the SR-72, and it promises to leave even the legendary Blackbird far behind. What's known about this hypersonic project? Why is the Pentagon so careful to hide its existence? Let's figure that out right now. Intelligence gathering has always been the cornerstone of national security, the largest fleet and the best missiles. But without accurate and up-to-date information about threats, it's like fighting blind. Satellites, interceptions, and cyber intelligence working in tandem are responsible for collecting this very information. But one of the most difficult and dangerous ways to obtain data was, is, and remains aerial reconnaissance especially when it comes to flying over territory where you're clearly not welcome. Reconnaissance aircraft do what no other system can. They penetrate restricted areas, obtain detailed data with minimal latency, and can instantly reroute based on the operational situation. In the 1960s, a device appeared that became a technological challenge, not only for any enemy air defense, but also for aerodynamics itself. We are, of course, talking about the SR-71 Blackbird. This engineering marvel has incorporated the best characteristics of a reconnaissance aircraft, lightning speed, operation at maximum altitude, and invulnerability to any enemy anti-aircraft missile system. Take for example the New York to London speed record it still holds, covering the 3,461.53 mile distance in 1 hour 54 minutes. While the best flight time for the commercial supersonic Concorde would have been 2 hours and 52 minutes. Not to mention the Boeing 747 we're used to, which would have had to spend about 6 hours and 15 minutes on the same route. However, like other ambitious aircraft, the SR-71 faced insanely expensive operation, increased requirements for crew training and support, and the collapse of the main potential rival, the USSR, also noticeably cooled the desire of the command and authorities to continue throwing money into the Blackbird's furnace. By 1989, most of the SR-71s had been retired, with the ICON's final operator being NASA, which used it as a research platform until it was finally retired in 1999, with reconnaissance missions being split between satellites and UAVs. Any further talk of potentially reviving the Blackbird was immediately met with strong resistance, the Air Force had no plans to budget for the aircraft and American drone developers were deeply concerned that their programs would be cut back if the government had to shell out money to maintain the SR-71 fleet again. Time passed, but Blackbird's fame never faded. The 21st century has presented the United States with new demands. The world is no longer divided into two competing superpowers. The role of local conflicts, asymmetric threats, hybrid wars, and short-term operations has grown. Where a slow satellite may simply not have time to obtain the necessary information, and a drone may not fly to the required point. Aerial reconnaissance has again come to the fore, but now it needs to be not just fast, but hypersonic. The first rumors about a possible successor to the SR-71 appeared in 2007, but since they remained in the status of unconfirmed information from the internet, real interest in the prospects of the United States getting its hands on the SR-72 only reached its peak in 2013, when information about the hypersonic aircraft in development was shared with Aviation Week and Space Technology magazine by employees of the Skunk Works division of the infamous Lockheed Martin. The wave of interest was so strong that it literally overflooded the publication servers. And of course, after all, for the first time, the talk turned to the actual preparation of a 60-foot demonstrator of the latest technologies comparable in size to the Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor. There were plans for it to be equipped with a single full-scale engine capable of delivering up to Mach 6 for several minutes with everything necessary for real-world testing ready by 2018. In 2017, the magazine revisited the SR-72, pointing to the possibility of Lockheed's accelerated hypersonic aircraft development. This time its author focused less on the industry hype and all sorts of hints about Son of Blackbird, but rather on the fact that the program seemed more mature than initially assumed. 
supplementing his article with a story about a demonstration of the supposed prototype. One eyewitness told the magazine that he saw what appeared to be a small unmanned aerial vehicle flying into the U.S. Air Force's Plant 42 in Palmdale, where the Skunk Works is headquartered, accompanied by two Northrop T-38 Talon aircraft. Lockheed, for its part, declined to comment to Aviation Week on this observation. And let's be honest, the airfield in question is gigantic. In addition to the Skunk Works devices, there could well have been prototypes of Boeing or Northrop Grumman, which have their own huge complexes here. The engines rightly considered the main focus of innovation in the SR-72. After all, it's not for nothing that Lockheed Martin, together with Aerojet Rocketdyne, have been working on a unique power plant capable of providing speeds of up to Mach 6 since 2006. The key to success was the idea of combining a turbojet engine and a ramjet or scramjet into a hybrid called a turbine-based combined cycle TBCC. The thing is that conventional turbojet engines are good up to speeds of 2.5 to 3 Mach. At higher speeds, they start to overheat and simply can't cope. The air's too hot, the compressors lose efficiency, and the fuel doesn't have time to burn properly. Above this limit, you can use a ramjet or scramjet. But there's a problem here as well. They don't function whatsoever at low speeds. They need a huge airflow, otherwise the fuel simply will not burn. Therefore, such engines are practically useless for takeoff or landing. The SR-72 must be able to take off from a normal runway, accelerate to Mach 6, and carry out daring missions in the heart of enemy territory. This means it needs an engine that can maintain efficient operation at all stages of flight from zero to hypersonic. That's why Skunk Works engineers chose TBCC. While details of the SR-72's ramjet have not yet been released, Lockheed officials have previously said that two turbofan engines were considered as the turbine basis for their TBCC, the Pratt & Whitney F-100 and the General Electric F-110. Both are high-performance after-burning engines previously seen on the US F-15 Eagle and F-16 Fighting Falcon. If we're talking about the layout, Lockheed considered options with dual flow paths and over and under configuration, since the scramjet runs on supersonic airflow. The company quite simply couldn't place the turbofan engine in line with the scramjet, so they focused on placing it above or below it, thereby ensuring unimpeded airflow. By the way, you may have recently seen a similar concept in a movie. We're talking about the 2022 Top Gun Maverick, which showed us the fictional Dark Star aircraft switching from a turbofan engine to a ramjet in flight. It all gets even more amusing when you know who helped the filmmakers with Dark Star and how it works. Yeah, you guessed it, the plane and everything connected with it was developed by the Skunk Works team. So now, until the official presentation of the Blackbird successor, we can only guess. Was Dark Star from the Top Gun sequel some kind of hidden announcement of the SR-72 for those in the know, or just a result of the wild imagination of the company's engineers? Another fundamental element in the SR-72 effort was digital transformation. As Lockheed Martin's Vice President of Strategy and Customer Requirements in Advanced Development Programs Jack O'Banion put it in 2018, he reported that we couldn't have made the engine itself. It would have melted down into slag if we tried to produce it five years ago, but now we can digitally print that engine with an incredibly sophisticated cooling system integrated into the material of the engine itself and have that engine survive multiple firings for routine operation. That same year, the Russian president announced the creation of what he called the world's first modern hypersonic weapon, the X-47M2 Kenzal missile, and plans to adopt the Avangard hypersonic glide vehicle, HGV. For many, this became a clear signal of the beginning of the modern hypersonic weapons race. Granted, during the war in Ukraine, it turned out that this very same wonder of a missile can be shot down even by the MIM-104 Patriot, which dates back to the 1970s. However, as of 2018, these missiles posed a potential threat to the United States, so Lockheed quietly closed the SR-72 page, which it existed for about five years. Obviously, this could have been due to the Pentagon's decision to reconsider the degree of publicity for a number of programs including the SR-72, or of an all desire to reduce open communications in the context of another arms race. The airframe of Lockheed's new creation will almost certainly undergo changes, 
so it's unlikely we'll see anything as exotic as the SR-71, which was very hard to confuse with anything else. The only thing that they will clearly not refuse is the latest materials in the production of the fuselage and critical components. After all, at speeds of 5 Mach and above, aerodynamic heating creates extreme temperatures that can melt any of the usual metal bodies of the aircraft. Simply put, we're looking at a mix of composites including high-performance carbon, metal, and ceramic blends like those we've seen in ICBMs and decommissioned space shuttles. The most significant change, however, will be the widespread adoption of AI and autonomous systems as the Skunk Works team is seriously considering making the basic version of the SR-72 unmanned, with a manned version being considered as an optional solution. At the very least, we won't have to bother again with special spacesuits and a technological base to ensure the safety of pilots when working at crazy speeds and altitudes, and this will at least open up broad potential for using the Blackbird successor in reconnaissance and precision strikes without direct human intervention. Moreover, the U.S. Air Force and Navy have repeatedly emphasized their intention to combine all new aircraft in the form of American sixth-generation fighters of the Next Generation Air Dominance Program and the new Northrop B-21 Raider bombers into a single ultimate system in which there will certainly be a place for the SR-72. So if Lockheed Martin finally confirms plans for the Son of Blackbird before 2030, look surprised and pretend Wild Iron didn't tell you about it first. What do you think? Will the SR-72 be able to surpass its legendary ancestor? And in what way exactly? Share your opinion in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.